Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel again. I know it's a bit odd having two videos in one week, but Brisbane, here in Australia where I live, we've been put into a snap three-day lockdown. So here we are. Uh, we had a bit of a coronavirus outbreak, so the Premier of our state decided to shut down the city, and now I have had my work cancelled, so I'm gonna make another video. It gives me something to do, and it hopefully gives anyone else in lockdown something to do as well. Today's video is going to be something a little bit different. Um, I don't usually like to do too much in the way of gear related videos, but I can't go out and shoot. So I'm just going to pretty much show you what I have in my bag. Um, first up is my main digital camera. I love this thing. I know I don't use it a great deal at the moment because I use the Hasselblad all the time, but this is a really great camera. Um, a 20 megapixel sensor, really, really good autofocus. Um, it's got a lot that it can do in terms of custom timers and bracketing, which is useful for me as a landscape photographer. Um, it doesn't have a full frame sensor, which a lot of people think is a bit of a downside and that you need a bigger sensor for landscape photography. I don't think that's true. Um, the smaller micro four thirds sensor does just fine. I've done big prints, I deliver work to clients, uh, I've done a print as big as 44 by 66 inches from this, well, from the older version of this camera, which was 16 megapixels. So, more than enough detail and resolution. I don't always have to stack photos for dynamic range because it does have 12.8 stops, but it's easy to set up if I need to. Really great camera. I've had it for 18 months or so. Before that, I was using the lower spec EM5 Mark II, um, which was still one of their higher spec cameras, but not an EM1. Um, really great cameras, I love Olympus cameras. My main lens is the 40 to 150 f2.8 Pro lens. This is a telephoto zoom 80 to 300 millimeter in 35 mil terms. Um, f2.8, it is super, super sharp. Um, I love it. It's my most used landscape photography lens. I know most people tend to use wide angles, but I don't. I like telephotos. Couldn't live without this lens. This is, speaking of wide angles, this is my wide angle zoom, 12 to 40 mil. Gives a full frame equivalent view of 24 to 80. Um, F2.8, really sharp lens. Uh, quite compact, 300 odd grams, um, and just really good image quality. It's got this cool little feature, which is a manual focus clutch. You just pull it back and you can manually focus really easily. Uh, the 40 has that as well. Most Olympus Pro lenses do. I also have my teleconverter here, just a standard 1.4 teleconverter. The only lens I have that it works with is the 40 to 150. Um, it will work on a couple of other telephotos, but I don't own them. I do have a bunch of other Olympus lenses, but I'm not going to show you them all because I don't regularly use them. Um, that uh, could be another video. Something else that's very important to landscape photography filters. Um, I have separate polarizing filters for each of my two lenses for the Olympus, 62 millimeter for the 12 to 40, 72 millimeter for the 40 to 150. Both of mine are Hoyer. One is a fairly standard Hoyer filter. The one on the 40 to 150 is a bit higher spec. It's like one of their pro ones or whatever. They do the same thing. Um, just the, the one on the 40 to 150 is a bit slimmer, which is useful. Um, biggest advantage of Polarizing filters, if you're unfamiliar with them, they cut reflections and glare. They, as you turn it, it, basically it's got two bits of glass and it just cancels out light from certain angles as it comes through. Really good for removing glare and reflections from water, leaves, that kind of thing. Also useful indoors if you're doing product shooting or anything like that. You can get rid of um, reflections from glass tabletops, magazine covers, that kind of thing. Um, but they also tend to make colors pop and seem a lot more vibrant particularly things like yellows and greens in leaves and in blues in skies. So really, really useful. Rarely leave home without them, unless I just forget them. Very important. Another type of filter I use regularly are the drop-in filters, which many landscape photographers use. Um, basically, I have two types of drop-in filters, solid NDs, which I have an eight stop and a three stop. Mine are made by Koken, who have been doing it a long, long time. Not as popular with photographers as, you know, the more recent brands like Nissi and Lee, but 
Coke can do a range of high quality shot glass filters, just like the other guys. Um, they call them their nuances range. Really good, very minimal um, color casting, really good filters. I also have a graduated filter. Unfortunately, I don't have a nice graduated filter. Mine is just uh, the resin version of the Koken. These are kind of the reason people don't love Koken. They're not bad, but they they leave a bit of color casting, which is really quite annoying. I'm actually on the hunt for a nice pea-sized grad filter at the moment. That's about it for filters. There are a few others that I might use from time to time, but they're the main ones. Please excuse me while I have some beer. It is after midday and I am in lockdown. Today, actually, if you're interested, I'm drinking a uh, boutique beer from Granite Belt Brewery. Small brewery out near Stanthorpe. Uh, all sort of craft beers, absolutely delicious. This is their Irish red ale. It's amazing. Multi caramel flavors. If you like a red beer, try and find it, get onto it. It's amazing. Anyway, on to the next thing. Um, my main camera, which I love, my main film camera, which I love, you've all seen it before, my Hasselblad 503 CX. This thing, this thing brings me so much joy to use. It's simple, it's chunky, and the image quality is outstanding. No light meter, no auto exposure, nothing like that. Just very straightforward camera. Um, I have the film back I have for it takes six by six centimeter negatives, which is what they're designed to do. You can get film backs for different sizes. There's a four by four centimeter, which I think is a bit silly. Uh, there's 645. I really like 645 format. My previous camera was a Mamiya 645, which I absolutely loved as well. But shoot six by six, you can crop to 645 if you need to. Beautiful camera. I managed to do pretty well picking these up. They can be quite expensive, but I got a good deal on it and I love it. Um, it's pretty much been the dream for years and most film photographers do dream about Hasselblads. They're lovely, I'm very lucky. The lenses I use on it, 150 millimeter CF lens and the 60 millimeter lens. Both Carl Zeiss lenses, both T-Star coated, both very sharp, both very good at reducing flares, um, really nice contrast and saturation and image quality. Um, the 150 mil is f4, maximum aperture. The wide angle 60 mil is f3.5. Neither are particularly large apertures, particularly when you compare them with what you can get in 35 mil cameras, but you really don't need large apertures with medium format. Um, they're the two lenses I use most. I do have a 50 millimeter as well, which is a bit wider than the 60 millimeter, but I don't use it as much. I don't tend to need the extra wide angle. And also its image quality is not quite as good. Still really good, it's a Carl Zeiss lens, but not quite as good. I would like to add two more lenses to this system at some stage, um, an 80 or 100 mil standard lens, which gives you something like a, you know, a 50 to 80 millimeter portrait range with 35 mil cameras. Um, so it'd be nice to have one of those. And I'd also like to add a 250 millimeter telephoto. If you have one of either of those that you'd like to get rid of for a decent price, hit me up. Um, that's my Hasselblad. Um, my Minolta Spot Meter M is invaluable in using the Hasselblad. Uh, I use it a lot because I don't have a man I don't have a meter in the camera. Um, so I like spot meters. Some people use reflective meters or instant meters, which uh, just meter in a different way. I like how precise spot metering is. I can point it at a particular tree and get exactly the right meter reading for that. Um, I tend to often do two or three meter readings throughout what my scene is and average them if I need to. Not such a big deal with negative film. It's quite forgiving. When you're shooting slide film, you really need to be particular about your metering. That's when spot meters are useful. Um, general rule with slide film is actually meter for your highlights. If you lose some shadow details, so be it, but you cannot get your highlights back. Um, Pentax do a really good digital spot meter like this as well. Um, it's very expensive because it's become very popular. Uh, internet popularity and that sort of thing. Nick Carver uses one that probably didn't help its price. Um, so this one cost me about $250. The Pentax one is about seven or $800. Uh, buy one while you can before they get too expensive.
I think the next thing I'd like to talk about is my drone. I love my drone. Before I bought this drone, I didn't love drones. I always thought drones were a bit silly, they were cheating, all of that kind of thing, but that was just silly of me because I didn't have one. The primary reason I bought this was to add value to my videos in terms of drone footage, not for its photographic capabilities. Um, I have found those since I've started using it that I do enjoy taking photos with it. Uh, it's the Mavic Air 2, so it's not a high spec Mavic Pro or a Phantom or anything like that. Um, it's a bit bigger sensor than the smaller drones, not as big as the Pros, it's a half inch sensor or something. Um, 12 megapixel photos. It does have a inbuilt uh, high res photo stacking mode, which can do 48 megapixels. I tend to do that quite a lot. Um, it's got a lot of cool features. You can do continuous timer sort of style shooting, essentially shooting selfies with your drone. Um, I figured that out one day when I needed it, which you'll see in an upcoming video, and I love it. It's such a cool feature. It does 4K video. I think I tend to shoot my video in 2.7K though, because I don't need 4K, um, but I love it. It's got 31 minutes fly time, huge range. It shoots in any kind of, like it's got enough flexibility for what I need. I love it. They're not cheap. They're not super expensive. It's a good mid-range drone. You can get it in a kit with three batteries, um, and a set of ND filters, which I got, and it's totally worthwhile. I, it took me a little while to get into it after I bought it, but I can't live without it now. I love my drone so much. Something else that is absolutely a must have for a landscape photographer is a good tripod. I spent a few years using a mid-level tripod and it's fine, it does the job. My good friend Andy still uses the same one, but another friend of mine who uses a nice Gitzo, he told me that if I buy a nice tripod, it will change my life, and he was correct. Um, I currently have the Leo Photo Ranger series. It's an LS324C. Um, so that means the 32 is 32 millimeter in diameter of the thickest leg section, four leg sections. Um, carbon fiber, it has a really nice ball head, 40 mil ball, so very strong, uh, panoramic type top plate as well, quick release Arca Swiss. It's just, it's just perfect, I love this thing. It's a little bit heavy, um, it's 1.95 kilos. I think it's quite lightweight for its size, but it is getting towards the heavier end, but it doesn't bother me because it's so stable, I love this thing. Um, it's fairly well priced for a fairly high end tripod as well, it's not at the $1,500 Gitzo range. I think at retail price, they're around about $650 with this head. Um, really, really good tripod. I couldn't live without it. I do have a couple of other little things I use as well. Um, obviously, the tripod that the camera I'm recording on is sitting on, that's my little Vanguard VO. Very lightweight, less than a kilogram, aluminium. I use it, um, I take it with me everywhere so that I have a, a tripod to set up my vlogging camera, my video camera on when I'm out shooting with my real tripod. So yeah, I tend to, I tend to take two tripods. Um, getting onto the video camera. This is my main video camera. This is my little Sony ZV-1. I only got this probably four or five months ago, maybe six months ago tops. Um, it's wonderful, it's great, it's changed my life. I never thought I would buy a digital camera it wasn't an Olympus, yet here I am. Um, this camera was released specifically with vloggers in mind. It's compact, it has a one inch sensor, so a bit smaller than my Olympus, um, but still more than one inch sensors have heaps of dynamic range. It's got a built-in lens, which is nice because I don't have to change the lenses like I was on the EM5. 24 to 70 full frame equivalent zoom, ra zoom range, f1.8 at the wide angle, f2.8 at the long end, so plenty of light gathering ability, and also still large enough apertures to get a, a decent sort of shallow depth of field if I need to you know, separate myself from the background. Um, heaps of video recording options. I'm not a video expert, so it probably has far more video settings than I can ever make most of. It's got stabilization. Um, admittedly, the stabilization in its video isn't as good as the EM5, but it's a much smaller camera body, so they don't have the room to to build as much stabilization in, but it works really, really well. Um, I love it. It's it's a bit fiddly in some ways because it's so small, like the dials and buttons are a bit small, 
there are always going to be a compromise. The camera weighs less than 350 grams. You got to, you got something's got to give. So I really like it. It's got a really nice inbuilt mic. I don't use that very often because I'm usually using my wireless go for the video micro, but in a pinch, if you need it, it does have a three microphone array built in, which is really good. Um, it's got jacks on the side for your for microphone. It doesn't have a headphone jack, but for vlogging, you don't really need that anyway, because you're usually filming yourself. Uh, fully articulating screen is nice. Um, none of the RX100 cameras, which it was based off, have an articulating screen, so that's handy. It has a hot shoe, doesn't have a viewfinder. Again, as a video camera, not an issue at all. You're not, you're not shooting through the viewfinder with the video. So that's my vlogging camera. Really, really great. I absolutely love it because it's just kept weight down and increased video quality. It does 4K. If I need 4K, I don't often shoot in 4K, but it can. Really, really good camera. I thought I'd finished talking about everything, but I realized there's something that I hadn't talked about, which is very important, particularly in regards to using Hasselblad. Film what film I typically tend to use. So there's probably three types really. These two, I only have two hands, and this one. Um, so these two are both by Fujifilm, obviously. Uh, Fujifilm is probably my favorite film company. Fuji Pro 160 NS is my favorite color negative film, hands down. Uh, it's got really nice, relatively vibrant colors, medium sort of levels of contrast. And for some reason it makes Sunset skies with clouds just look incredible. Um, I love it, it's really, really good stuff. A lot of people don't use it a lot or don't love it. I do. My other Fujifilm love is Velvia 50. Velvia 50 is a transparency or slide film. When you shoot this, you don't get negatives, you get small pictures that look how they really do. This stuff is amazing. Super high contrast, super saturated colors, quite difficult to work with. Um, shooting sunrise and not as much, but sunset, ideally you need to be using uh, screw on lens for, or drop in colored filters for adjusting for essentially for white balance. Um, it has very narrow latitude and dynamic range, maybe about four stops. So you need to, and this is why I said earlier, you need to meter for your highlights um, because you can probably lift your shadows slightly in post, but you cannot recover blown highlights from slide film. But when you get Velvia right, you really get it right. Um, I don't shoot it all that often. Uh, at the moment I have a five pack though, so maybe I will, but this is really, really great. And the other film I like to shoot with a lot is Kodak. Um, most famous company in the world when it comes to film. Everyone knows Kodak. Um, Kodak Ektar 100. It's the world's finest grain negative film, I believe, or so they claim. And it's quite high saturation contrast as well. Fairly warm in its color palette but I like it because of its, its sharp, really sharp results and really fine grain. So they're the types of film I regularly use. Um, sometimes I might use a black and white film as well. Lately, if I have, it's been um, a Fuji one again, uh, the Fujifilm Acros 100, uh, high contrast, low grain 100 ISO black and white. Um, I really like it. It's been discontinued and they've replaced it with a Backcross version 2, which I've got a roll but I haven't used yet. Um, otherwise, Kodak do some nice ones as well. Tri-X 400, if you like, uh, grainy film is really nice. It's a high speed black and white. Otherwise, they've got T-Max 100 is a nice sort of really good tonal range black and white ISO, 100 ISO. And Ilford do a few. I've not used any of the Ilford ones. Um, in, the, in the Hasselblad, to be honest, but they do a 100 and 125, uh, 50 and 125 ISO I'd like to try. Um, and that pretty much covers film, I think. A lot of people tend to use fast films for hand holding in that, 400s and 800s. Um, you can get Kodak and Fuji color films in both of those, but I don't tend to use high speed films very often because everything I do is usually on a tripod. I've used 400 every now and then, and if I do, I often will overexpose it and rate it as a 200 anyway, get a little bit softer colors, um, but that's about it. I think that's everything I have to talk about today. Uh, if you've stuck with me for this very different video of mine, thank you very much. Hopefully you've learned something or got a different perspective out of it or something like that. 
if nothing else, hopefully it's killed a few minutes for you while you're stuck in lockdown. Um, if you have any questions about any of the gear I use or anything, please feel free to ask me. I have no problems chatting about that. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. If you haven't already, I would appreciate it if you could uh, subscribe to my channel. If you're in Queensland and like beer, check out the Granite Belt Group Brewery. Really, really great brewery. I'll leave a link to their Instagram as well. Um, but basically, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you soon.